Thanks for staying with us. Now, the International Day of Conscience is a global day of awareness celebrated on April 5th, commemorating the importance of human conscience. It was established by the United Nations General Assembly on July 25th, 2019, with the adoption of the UN Resolution 73329. Um, Premiable, um, or sorry, the preamble rather to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights states that disregard and contempt of human rights have resulted in barbarous acts which have outraged the conscience of humankind and the advent of a world in which human beings shall enjoy freedom of speech and belief and freedom from fear and what has been proclaimed ha um, as the highest aspiration of the common man. <laughs> I'm just wondering, do we have conscience in Nigeria? I don't know about any part of the world. Because sometimes, again, when you see some of the things that people do, and this is not, again, because every when you hear issue of conscience, you just want to go straight to leaders, even as Nigerians, as humans. Do we really have conscience anymore? Because, again, there are some things that we do to a fellow human being that, you know, it's almost like, ah, where is this coming from? Like, do you really... You know, even they fear, say, you know, they fear God, you know. That, that phrase, I think, is gone because people just do anything that they feel like doing. I mean, you just took it out um, of my mouth. Um, it's just a point that say, fear God, do. And if you, I think it's embedded in morals. So because of how things are, maybe Fully a culture or something, yeah, so it's gradually that conscience. So people look at the bigger things like stealing, maybe millions. But what about the little things you do? Maybe even um, seeing someone. The other day I saw, I witnessed an accident and people were just passing by. Um, I had to someone stop. Someone bringing out their so, phones. Yeah, or bringing out their phones. And even the person that even um, knocked this guy down came out and was just watching this guy. I had to shout and like, what are you guys doing? Do something about this. Take him to the hospital. So it, it's, it's further than just thinking about the big picture, stealing billions, killing. It's about those little things. Um, it's also about a little bit about empathy too. Do you really look at something? How would you want people to treat you? You know, treat people the way you want people to treat you. So it's, it's, it's a really important day. I hope, you know, people start to fear God. I know there are people that don't believe in God anyway, <laughs> but just fear whatever conscience. you want to fear, fear, whatever you believe fear in. Fear something, I beg. Just fear really. something because, I, like, it's really, it's really scary. You know, you see people do things and you just wonder, do you really have a conscience? Because, again, these are things that, like you rightly said, the moral standards that held some of the things that our fathers, uh, their own fathers did, it, it held the fabric of, you know, society. And, you know, you know, lately I've been watching a lot of videos online about how the children, especially in the United States, have been indoctrinated into some very, you know, I just wonder, so where is the conscience? Where are these people, where are they taking these people to? I mean, this thing is deep. Because now it's almost like if you just sneeze small and say, oh, this is how I feel automatically, you know, there's no, there's no um, guide. There's nothing like morals to say, you know, there are some standards that we cannot go That's by. That's boundary. Yeah, that boundary. Because you keep on saying, I, because, because even where your freedom stops, that's where my own starts, you know. It's, it's, it's a bit of a dicey thing because in a bit to want to say, oh, everybody's freedom must be respected. At the same time, we are losing, you know, some level of hold that we had, like at least sanity. In fact, that's the word I'm looking for. We're losing some level of sanity because now everybody's just confused. You know, I can wake up tomorrow and say I'm a tooth fairy. <laughs> just accept me like that. Don't question <laughs> it. <laughs> but no matter... What do you have to say about yeah. conscience? Consideration queen. <laughs> I was just going to, I, I knew you were going to say, <laughs> I knew you were going to say about consideration. I think uh, by and by, what I, I, I believe that we're beginning to lose what we knew to be humanity, what it means to be human, right? And like Glory rightly said, it's about putting yourself in the position of someone else. Mm -hmm. If you are the one on the receiving end, and this is a question, I mean, I can't stop talking about it, Ua, because I always like, most times when I ask people that question, if you were the one on the receiving end, how will you feel? 
and I find out that people's uh, behavior changes because now you are the one taking the brunt of whatever it is that is coming. And really, it also ties to what Gori had also said about values. We are gradually losing what made us human beings, being able to look out for one another, being able to live peaceably and in harmony towards one another. So when that is lost, it comes to exactly what you are saying. Insanity will become the order Loma, of the day. please, please, please. I do not identify as a human being. <laughs> respect <laughs> it. Respect it. <laughs> so we will continue to respect what everybody wishes to be identified with. But at the end of the day, the question is how does it affect the other person? It's not okay for my own rights to be respected alone without considering the rights of somebody else. I can respect what you did, what you want to do, but how does it affect me as a person? How does it affect my children as a person? How does it affect my community or my society? And that's why everybody is going to be accountable. Uh, 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 um, Glory talked about the individuals. I will bring it back to leadership. Because that used to be the example, that used to be the benchmark for a lot of people to look up to, to say, okay, these are the people we're looking up to, we should emulate them. Back in the days, you found um, all of those rules and some of the things that helped people to fall in line. But where are those rules? How are they implemented? What are they doing? And now everybody is living for himself and deciding what is right or wrong for himself. Oh, definitely, anarchy would be the, the, the result of the day. Mm, absolutely. Okay, so let's quickly run through what we found, Glory. Let me start with you. Um, it's about um, Blessing CEO. Actress Stone to DK recently expressed her joy at the arrest of the controversial blogger. Tonto wrote, to publicly insult, blame, and intrude on such a delicate and sensitive issue, she needs to feel their pain. And I, I also saw another article, I think today still, which says she's been granted bill um, of about 10 million naira. Maybe I'll have to confirm that, but that's what's out there currently. Um, so my take on this is maybe, again, we will have to tread with caution when we're trying to um, talk about some sensitive issues such as death and especially the controversy that surrounded that particular situation. And I think... It's and this arrest was linked to that person that died. I think it was ID. Um... That fashion person that the yes. wife died, right? Yes, okay. Ikechuku Obona's um, mm. wife. So, I mean, where I read people's comments, so many people were in support of what the arrest and so on. So it means people were not really happy with whatsoever her take was. And she coming out in the middle, the heat, how hot it was then, she coming out to give her opinion and talk, issuing some certain statements. So I think we just have to be... So, you know, I, I think that, first of all, it's two things. Because I see her and I see um, that the Freeze, they do the same thing. Yeah. Whenever there's a situation that is really hot on the like at the front burner of social media, you would see them jump on it, talk about it. Because I remember, I remember that I had seen few clips when they, the, there was the fight and all mm -hmm. of that, you know, with the, the man, the wife mm -hmm. and all of that. You know, because she claims, I mean, she's a self-acclaimed, what do you call it, relationship uh, expert. expert, right? Maybe that's why she felt the need mm -hmm. to, to talk about the issue. But like you rightly said, you must learn to w draw the line, right. set boundaries, even if social media gives you the opportunity to talk in every matter. It's not every issue you must put your mouth inside. And also you know? even how you even approach it to those matter. So mm. I think the major issue was how she approached it. Mm. So many people were not happy, especially the deceased family was not really happy about it. True. Okay, so let me take um, Norma, your what's in the news? Again, just to add quickly, conscience comes in. You know, when you're talking about other people's stories, mm. other people, without being sensitive to how they're going to receive it. And then you ask yourself, what if you were the one whose story was out there? How would you feel if these were the reactions or these were the things that people were saying? But again, a lot of people don't pay attention to that. They don't know, the, right, they so don't know how to put their, no. um, themselves in other people's shoes. 
Go ahead. No, they don't. Because in hot news, right? So mm. let me be one of the first people to say something about it about or to be an, for the, uh, uh, It's all for the gram. They want to trend. Things. You want to get more followers. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. To what end? Absolutely. I guess there are consequences that come with some of these things sometimes. Absolutely. Go ahead. So my story has to do with our... Uh, the federal government, it says that uh, FG to splash over 320 billion Naira on tertiary institutions. So the story has it that uh, the our president, Major General Muhammad Buhari, has approved the sum of 320 billion, 345 million, and 40,835 Naira, as the 2023 intervention funds for public tertiary education institutions around the country, and um, all the institutions, including colleges of of technology, um, universities, uh, uh, the polytechnics, they are supposed to benefit from this fund. So, and over the years, we've had over, uh, I think, uh, some trillion amount, you know, in trillions that has been disbursed since 1993. Now, uh, a bit of my concerns for this story was that when I saw it, I was wondering that how much of this money was available for when the universities were on strike. Maybe I need clarity on how these funds are to be disbursed, what they're supposed to cover, so to speak, because I'm wondering if we had this much money available, why was part of it not um, initiated Why did to we experience an eight-month-long strike? The, the, in, the, the, the situation of almost a year of students being out of strike. And another thing that caught my attention was that it's supposed to be like a parting gift. And I'm wondering, this is the work of public service. How is it supposed to be? Are you doing Nigerians a favor? I mean, I was just completely confused about this story because I'm wondering if funds were available in this quantum, why did we not uh, use wisdom to deal with the situations that we've dealt with over the months and then at the end of the day we at the end of the day we find out that students have been on strike students have been out of school we've lost quite a bit we can't even quantify the 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 damages that have been done over the months so those are my questions i mean and my concerns really because this this is huge and um this is supposed to represent the highest disbursement uh, for for the benefit of institutions, and I don't I, I don't recall institutions who have praised the administration, saying that oh over eight years we have we have done well. With, I mean, it's almost like we have been at an all time low. Hmm. So please, Uwa, I don't know. Maybe I'm confused or I'm not sure what, but. I mean, I just need someone to really explain to me how this is going to solve the several months, in fact, almost a year of, of, of the education so, troubles that we've had in the country. So, Noma, I, I like the fact that you're raising a lot of questions. Sadly, I do not have an answer for you. <laughs> because, again, on this table, I took a story of a jam um, registrar, former jam registrar that was, you know, I think charged to court for a fraud of five billion himself and his family. I think Jennifer took. Yes, a story. I remember that story. Yeah. His children yeah. were also involved. Jennifer, in Jennifer took another story of someone I, I can't remember what in, what which of the educational institution you know. So even amidst all of these things, I don't know why it, it seems like the federal government just like big, you like name dropping, you know, three hundred twenty billion, you splash, splash it, you know, I love you it, know, and you say it's splash. a parting gift. It's not a parting gift, right? It's it, up it, to it, one it, point it's really two appalling trillion. Because now I have mm. children that are about to go into the university, and I know what it's taking, costing us as a family to be able to put those, to, to be able to give them quality education, right? You, you're not giving anybody any gift, right? Education is the right of every Nigerian, and it makes no sense that at this kind of headline. So maybe let me blame it on the, on the, the newspaper, 
that is maybe the the the, 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 they want their paper to sell, so to or they want readers to come there. Yeah, so they want it sensational because I don't understand how this is even making news because we need to move past all of these things and get the job done. But you know what? Let me take my story because I don't want to stress myself. No, I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I like this story because, I mean, I, I have ma I've maintained, because I've followed this Equator model story for a while, and I have maintained the same thing, and I keep on saying that nobody would carry anybody from Nigeria, you know, and travel all the way to the UK, you know, and the person will not be feigning, I, I didn't know that my organ was going to be removed. You, are, you know, because before, they will, before anything, transactions or whatever will happen, you would have been tested to see that your kidney, I mean, kidney is not, I don't even know, there's no part of your body that, you have to test that it matches yeah. before we even leave to say, okay, yes, we found a match for the person that wants to be, you know, uh, that wants to undergo a kidney transplant. So the former gov uh, president, rather, of um, Nigeria, Obasanjo, has written to the UK court. Um, in the letter, he, was, he addressed the letter to the chief clerk, the Central Criminal Court, Old um, Ballet in London, um, the, is asking that he, um, the, this clerk should intervene and ensure that the UK government temper justice with mercy on the matter. Uh, because right now, Ekorum Madu is at risk of being sentenced to 10 years imprisonment in line with the modern slavery act of 2015 uh, um, of the United Kingdom after a London court had found him and his wife guilty of organ trafficking. So this modern day slavery, I have not read that act. I would like to read it to understand what it is. But I would like to say that, you see, there is something called, you know, even the acceptance to even go on that trip. It's not like this person was like, you know, tied, tied or whatever. Oh, this person willingly. There was a story I took one time, I can't remember the, the country now, that they go to sell their toes. That's how bad the poverty, um, the poverty is. So the, pink, the tiny um, toes are like cheaper than the, the most expensive was the big toe. I, I remember taking that story here. So everybody understands that for economic reasons, people will do things, right? So I, I don't want it to look like these people maybe like forced or cajoled the guy. Yes. But so, and, and again, I really don't like the terminology organ trafficking. Do you understand? Maybe they just did not do a proper paperwork. But there's nobody... They, this is not organ trafficking. They didn't harvest the, the organ from his... Um, um, what's it called? His and body, body and now took it you know, to somewhere else. He was clearly in the know that he was going to go and... Um, what's it called? Don, donate be, do, donate his, his, one of his kidneys to their daughter. So I don't like the, the caption, even though I'm not a fan of government people, right? Because you see, this is the problem. When we say do things right, they don't do things right. This is what you face. Because it would have been so easy if a lawyer came into this picture, drafted an agreement, you signed it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And everybody signed in the presence of a witness. So you know that this is not... Because, I mean, I can do surrogacy, right? I can give you my, my, my organ if, if, if you need it and we, we are a match. Do you get what I'm saying? Whether there's monetary exchange or not, it's something I can do. But let us begin to do things by the law. You see, this is where the problem is. Because you think, oh, I'm a big man and everything, I can just... Now, there you don't go enter one chance because you're in a country where, you know, everything goes by the books. So it's just a sad situation. But the former president has written, we hope um, they will temper justice with mercy. But I don't see him going out of that sentence. He, he will probably serve maybe a lighter sentence. On that note, let's discuss oral health. Biko, stay with us. <laughs> we'll be right back.